Hello everyone, and welcome to today's episode of One Day One Legion. Today, as promised, we'll be playing a Rush Monthan. And before we get started, let me just mention that tomorrow we will be playing Night Houses. So please make a choice in the comments for the combination of Night and Pilot that you want to see me playing. But as of today, we will be playing this city in Rush Brunthan. So, um, we are kind of sitting on a hinge here. Why is that so? Because we have two different approaches. We com this deck combines two different approaches. We do have a classical mid-range option with the current veteran and the brand nev and the certain correct and the marauder squad and the sigma fight Dun and Cadmaster and Dunter. So this aims at taking a good control of the board thanks to brand nev and the veteran Kiran. And then we will win with either Cadmustaro or Barabas Dentia. So that's one game plan. And the other one, the funnier one, is the Parvat Wake plan. So what do we intend to do this? How do we intend to do this? Well, we aim at just surviving for as long as we can. Thanks to Apothecary Renown combined with Pi Alpha, thanks to the Ectres. And when doing this, this is for the slower matchups, of course, we do have many cards that allow us to never run out of options. Fortune Choice, K. Zulin, Ashen Close, Abandoned Supplies, Trubak Star Sight, this one Athava, please do not play this card at home. I included it in the deck just to try it out, but it turns out it's a pretty terrible card, as one would expect. And also Surgeon Correct for maximum value. I also included Sigma Phi. Now this is debat debatable because I could run instead an informal network or something. But I was thinking, well, against the burst deck of the Waven Guard, maybe I have enough heal to just go through this game so I don't need informal network. And I would much rather have something to deal with the Siege Lights uh, and their markers chosen. So, that's the list we're going to be using. We will note that there is no Shulta Legionary, and that's a shame. I just decided not to put it in. It, it's a great option, and it's a shame I passed on it, but, but okay. This is what we're going to be using anyway. So, now, into the games. And the first game is against the Crawl. And I'm like, okay, this is also one of the reasons why I wanted to include that Atharva. It is just because it has precognition, so Kroll can swing into it. Now, I'm, I don't want any of these cards. What I want is Brand Nev, Apothecary Known, and Long Martial. Jubak Star Sight is also fine, I think. Uh, Kay Zulan is also great, Abundance Supplies is good, and the Kiran Veteran. These are the cards I was looking for. So I'm just gonna pass through his first turn. He plays strategic reserves, so he draws two t infantries and both them. Now, now we Tobek no one apothecary. So I'll play it. Then he goes for the command bridge, and with that command bridge, he finds his second strategic reserves. So now he has a very good hit. He, he sees and looks so, so good that he decides not to evacuate. He decides to save some HP, and he just hopes he can win with a big fat Morton Pole. Which I think is a mistake against Branathan, because in the long run Branathan will always uh, get back the Morton Pole, especially with a non apothecary. What I said might be wrong if this guy is not on the board, but the thing is, it is on the board just now, so we will be able to generate a lot of healing or tempo or whatever. Okay, so here he has two 4-4s. Four These are good targets for Melgator. So I just play my Melgator and I could bounce it and just play it again. But I decide it's a bad idea because I kind of prefer it to be in my hand rather than on the board if I can afford it to be in my hand rather than on the board. The reason is I just sent the last rifle back into his hands so he could just last rifle into it and swing with his face and make another 4-4. Four four. Now he top decks this Tiltail and Hawk which is bad for us. He hits there, and I can't decide whether I'm happy or not about that. I love both my boys the same, 
and I can't be fine with either of them leaving me. So the Norn uh, dies, and what's it called? Brandnev st sticks with us, and that's fine. Our hand is full enough. We shouldn't need uh, another. I mean, more bouncing. So the knife is here. I'm just gonna shoot at things. I'm breathing their HP so that they are far from dying from the curl. And now he plays two other troops. Now the third troop he drew with his strategic, uh, strategic reserves. So there's still one more. I can deal with that pretty easily. Either with a Kuran veteran. I decided to go for the Garuda, and I'm not entirely sure why I decided to do that, but that was my choice. Okay. And now, I want to buff this thing, so if he doesn't play the curl now, it will survive a hit. And I could also have played on Martial, but I did not want to play too much, in, either into the Great Tithe, or into a curl that would have left this thing. Uh, able to die of that or not the last rifle who saw one so he's probably winning two but I could have played it just to try and bait out uh, the great tithe so that we can safely play Cadmus Tyro okay here I don't mind buffing my thing because this is a game I will have to win I think with Cadmus Tyro so dealing some ex extra five damage on him I I'm fine with that and this one HP on one Martial doesn't actually matter. And now we see the fourth troop drawn with uh, his strategic reserves. So now all of his troops are normal cost and normal size. And he does start like the second Steel Talon Hawk, and that was the last card we needed to be aware of. Not quite the last actually, because there is still the Great Tithe. But anyway, I don't know why he decides to not attack there. Maybe he just forgot about. Uh, he forgot about the fact that jamming my troop will also remove self, which is unforgivable since he already played one steel talent hook and used that to kill the apothecary norn. But anyway, I don't know if that cost him the game, but this is the big hindrance for him. So now he has uh, only a 3 3 on a 4 2 on the board, and I have a 9 9 Tyro. I decide to bounce this thing. Uh, because there are a couple of reasons for that. Either if he plays it and I draw into my uh, pirate raid, then I can. Sorry. Then I can. Well, win with a fatigue game plan. In case, say, he goes with the Great Tithe and then he plays it again. And also with just a 3 3 back to his end. And it costs 6. So, putting it back into his hand is pretty much just as good as killing it. Now we see the curl, and that doesn't do anything actually. And the reason why he did that uh, is because he has the second one in his head. So he had to go for that. So he, here, either he doesn't have the, t the great tithe, or he's greeting, and he doesn't want to play it just now because he hopes to lure some more astartes into it. And here I'm just gonna pass. I'm playing crucial choice like an idiot because I just didn't notice that I could untie some this and just have little. Completely forgot about that. Pylphas were right in my hand uh, just to heal me and I completely forgot about that stern removing thing. So okay, that was the first game. And as you noticed, he went down to six cards in his deck and we still didn't need Pirate Way to win. So Pirate Red, I think it's a very terrible choice. You should, I don't think you should run the card. I tried actually, and I did like 10 games, and these are two ones I decided to show you guys today, but Pyrotrade never got me there. So here I decide to toss it away, and it just comes back to my hand, so okay. And you will witness a couple mistakes of me in this game, but I still decided to show it to you guys because it's still interesting, it's from my mistakes that you will learn. Okay, so he has these two 1-3s and his hand is very small, so I absolutely don't want him to draw any card and therefore I decide to get rid of these two. And how do I do that? Well, I just... why is that stunt thing in the middle of my screen? I just go with... Well, go with the Ashen Globe. 
And I don't mind spending one gear with here, it's a pretty expensive card for late stages in the game. And here if you deny him a card, all the better. Now he top decks that Assassin, I mean I don't mind him top decking it, he could have had in his first 3 cards, it didn't really want to keep in the mulligan. So I'm fine with that. And now I decided for some reason to not play the Drewback star side because I'm like okay, I don't want him to shoot it. And it's actually a mistake. I should just shoot it, uh, leave my martial alive. If I top deck anything, like uh, the Athava for example, I would have been glad I had one this one extra energy to go with the Ashen Claw. Drewback will die on his ability whatsoever, so it was a huge mistake not playing that Drewback. But we're, we're trying some stupid things, and we, we will see what's working on what's not. So here he used his ability to shoot me in the face. So I'm like, okay, well, if I want to stick to my idea of having Jubak survive two turns, this is no or never. So I just play. But that's another error, because in Agents of Siege, like, there is uh, the 3-3 that shoots for one and draw a card, and there is also the free fight that shoots for free and put a seal into his deck. So that's two seals into his deck, and that's the reason why I should have never played uh, the way I have. I should have Ekatres put on the board, basically, at this point. So now I do another questionable play, I think. Fishing for the Ashen Claw, I don't mind that. This is this was a better idea. And here I just go for the Earth Hour. And I, I'm, I kind of think it's suboptimal and that current veteran would have been better here. Because now he plays a Sigilized Chosen. And so he, he would have done it anyway, I guess. But now it's one less damage because he will be. He will have had sentence one a turn earlier. He will have still had it when he swung face. So. This thing will be 5 HP actually. And that's. That is going to make a difference. Because now he's at 4. And I can't quite. Uh, I can't quite do anything about that. And also here I kind of think I should have just played the Canvas Tyro. Lam. Or just play the Acastrace, but not generate another card because my hand is big enough. But I was like, I put this card into my deck, I want to use it. And that's another error. <laughs> it's not because you do a bad, bad thing in the first time that you should go on with your stupid ID. You, I should have had the lucid, the just, I mean, I should have been reasonable enough to be like, okay, this was a terrible include, I, I, I recognize it, I acknowledge it. Screw it, let's just forget about it, and I just use this thing as the unworthy 3-5 it is. Once I've buffed it, of course. Uh, so now I can get rid of this thing, and I will actually use my Athava to get rid of these 2 five. So at least the card is doing something. And I hear I'm like, okay, he could kill me now if he had the Macragi seal, the one that deals 7 alongside, say, the sword, for example. But he doesn't quite have it, and he plays this fat thing instead, which is a real pain for me. And why is it a real pain? Uh, because I don't have a known apothecary, so I need the sustainable source of healing, and the only one I have available is that Ecatrice. So I cannot go for... I cannot just send three things into it. So instead, I decided to just Add some more manpower onto the ball. I poke here. Uh, that's a fine. Uh, that's a decision I'm happy with because now if he plays the seal of sisterhood, at least this thing is smaller. Okay, so for really force, he doesn't quite have a seal now, but he just played a command bridge, so he might have uh, just drew one, and now it's just not a good time to play it. So say it could be. It's perfectly understandable that. It could be the the deal seven damage, and it's just waiting a turn to set up lethal. Now we see the front line, and we also had that that assassin. The three four actually doesn't matter anymore. My hand is completely full of big stuff, so there is no point trying to just add more things into it. And there should have played the assassin, I guess. But I was scared of the. It's easy after the game to say what you should have done. But I was afraid of the the seal that deals 7, and he does have it, Secret of the Throne, that's it. Alongside, say, anything. Like the the sword, for example, the deal 5, would have been dead here. 
So although it's a shame that this thing is not on the board, we're still reasonably in a good spot. And also I decided to heal this just because I want this to be another threat you need to focus on and when he's focusing on my threats he's not focusing on my face. So I'm fine with that. And now I should probably just go with the Dantiac. But I decide not to because I want to buff my things for whatever reason. And okay I do that and that was a, this whole turn was a terrible idea uh, because if I play Dantiac he can't quite kill me and I should also give the 1 HP to this dude because this is just too good for him. So this works and I won't have the time to play my Dantioch again. So yeah, he does have everything he needs. It's a bit lucky for on his end. Like his end is very small and he just has everything he needs. So here uh, my choices were Nostramo and the instruments and the first one, I think it was House Varani, so it was, it was terrible. So I decided to go for the instrument because I'm like, oh, okay, great, it's 5 4 damage and, and, and it's fine. But actually, I misplay completely here, and that's just gonna cost me the, way, the game, as you will see. Because now, what do I do? Because I didn't put the 1 HP here at the, at the earlier, you can just shoot me here. If I don't heal, I'm most likely dead. And if I don't shoot, I'm most likely dead too. So there's nothing I can do. So, uh, the, the, my best shot, I think, was to pick Nostramo and just buy me a turn. Or if I go for the instrument, I should play it there because I don't care about dealing 4 damage to his face. So I should I go, the instrument was fine, I think, and I should just play it there and then shoot this, for example. And now I'm, uh, and then I, I buff these two things so that they're both at 4. He can attack me with whatever, so he can't kill me just yet, so I don't need to heal, and I'm in a very good spot. But now I'm just realizing what I did, and I'm like, okay, uh, well, let's just survive, you know, and I go for shooting here. But that entire turn was a complete mess. So mistakes happen when you're not focusing hard enough, and I'm glad that such mistake happened on the ladder, because it means I won't make them in the World Cup. Not at a cool, because I'm not playing Brantham whatsoever, but you get the idea. And now, just look at me. He has that big 6-7, and I have... I still have a couple of things to answer his cards. But I need to say goodbye to Ecatrez, and it's a shame, because I still needed it, because now I'm completely out of healing. So I go with this. I swing. And I can't help but to notice that in the top 12 of his cards, he got uh, he got one seal, which is not that likely actually. And he got his two rune priests, he got his two assassins, he got uh, he got everything he needed. Always with the three, with uh, and reasonably small, with three cards or less. So now, yeah, I mean, so, here he kills me with that Macragas and all, but honestly, it could have been anything. Could have been the sort of truth, so or just a good seal. So I really don't mind anything like that. It's a bit of shame that he has three cards in hand and two of them have burst. Are burst right after he just played all of his strongest troops turn after turn. But I can't really blame him because if I had played this correctly, I could have won the game. So yeah, well, that was it for today. I hope you guys still enjoyed the video despite my terrible mistakes. And one last note, this is probably not the best version of Urwash Brunthan, but this is possibly one of the funniest ones, just because of the amount of randomness there is, of random card generation there is. Athava, Brandnev, Marauder, blah blah blah, you know that. And also, yeah, it's maybe slightly better than Karin, just because there are so many crows in the meta out there, and Brunthan is, uh, Karin's a bit weak to this crow actually. So this is a good compromise, we can steal cards, copy them, generate lots of random things and we still are a 40 HP warlord and we are still gonna gain a lot of HP, so yeah. That's kind of an in-between which I like, but this is definitely not a very competitive deck. So that was it for today, tomorrow as I mentioned earlier, we will be playing Night Houses. So yeah, you're just going to choose one pilot with one warlord. And then if there is a clear win, I will pick that. If there is no clear win, I will try and do a mix-up for everything. 
I'm not entirely sure how I will do this, but I will figure out something cool, just as I usually do. Thank you guys for watching. Please consider leaving a like or subscribe if it's not done already, and take care.